This is something that occurred years ago, when I was a child. I really don't remember my exact age. I was probably around eight years old if I had to guess though. Back then, I really liked to go to this park that was down the street from our house where I lived with my little brother and parents. It only took like two minutes to walk to the park from our house. Our neighborhood was decently populated and the park would get quite a few people. There was usually always an open swing I could go to though, or I would go there with my brother and we would just hang out. The park had the typical swings, monkey bars, slides, and some other equipment. It also had a little field, a small trail going around, and a parking lot. There were streets on two sides of it as well. One day, I think it was a Saturday morning, I went to the park by myself. I wasn't really supposed to go by myself, but I had done it a couple of times before, and it was fine, so my parents had become a little loose with the rules. When I got to the park that day, nobody else was there. My brother also didn't go with me, and I can't remember exactly why. If I had to guess, he was probably either still sleeping or watching TV. I really liked being outside as a kid and had a lot of energy, so I walked there and then played around on the equipment. They had one of those things that's kind of like a zip line. I don't know what the playground version is called, but I know that I was on that for a little bit and then went to the swings. I was on the swings for a while, and by that point, I had probably been at the park for about 30 minutes. And that whole time, nobody else went there. The swings faced the road, and very occasionally, a car would drive by. I was about to stop swinging and go back home, and I remember that a silver car drove down the street but was going really slow. I thought that it was going to stop at the park because it was going so slow and looked like it was starting to pull over, but it did not pull over. It kept driving and then turned at the spot where the other street was that bordered the park. I watched it keep driving away and eventually it disappeared in the distance and out of my view. I was always a little suspicious of slow moving cars as a kid. About a minute or so went by. I started letting the swing slow down and come to a stop. When it did, I sat there and noticed that there was a man now walking down the sidewalk. The guy had sort of longer hair and he was walking on the sidewalk in front of the park. He then entered the park and he walked sort of in the play area for kids. He was moving slowly and it almost looked like he didn't know exactly where he was going. The guy also didn't have a child with him at all. This seemed a little bit strange to me and I decided to just go home. I got up from the swing and walked back in the opposite direction of the man. I did not look back at him and I made my way to the sidewalk. Luckily, I didn't have to pass by him. When I left, all I had to do was turn the corner and walk the two minutes or so back to our house. About a minute into the walk, when I could literally see my house in the distance, I heard a car approaching on the street from behind. I looked back and saw the same silver car as before. It was once again driving at an extremely slow pace. I kept walking and the car was taking a while to even catch up to me. Eventually, it did though, and it started to pass me by. I looked over out of curiosity and was surprised to see the man with long hair from the park was driving. The window was rolled down and he started to look over at me. I looked away and was within probably 100 feet of my house. I cut into one of our neighbor's front yards because the guy in the car was making me nervous. I watched the car slowly keep driving and start to pass by my house. I cut through the rest of the neighbor's yard and then was into our next door neighbor's front yard. Finally, I made it to my house. I quickly got to the front door and went inside. By that time, the silver car was a ways down, but I could still see it and it was still moving very slowly. I went inside and forgot all about it, thinking that that was the end of that. But several hours later, I went back outside into the front yard. I was outside for no longer than five minutes before I once again saw the silver car starting to drive slowly down the street again. I immediately ran back inside as fast as I could. Once I was in, I watched out the front window as the car passed by our house and kept going. It maintained the snail speed that it had been going before. I knew something strange was going on, but I didn't know exactly what. For the rest of the day, I didn't notice it. I stayed inside and I felt safe in the house. It was a normal Saturday for the rest of it. However, late that night, I was up late watching TV with my parents. I heard them start to talk about something as I was still watching the TV. When I looked over, they were noticing something out the window. That's when I saw the flashing police lights a little ways down our street. My parents were wondering what exactly was going on. Soon, they realized that the police had stopped a car which happened to be the same silver car. After several minutes, everybody drove away and I told my parents about my experience with that car. They ended up calling the police about it 
and I found out later that the man was pulled over because another neighbor reported him as a suspicious vehicle. He had been seemingly circling the block late at night, driving extremely slow. I'm really glad that the police stopped him. I sometimes wonder if he had intentions to break into our house or something like that. This story happened two years ago. During this time, I lived in an apartment by myself. The apartment complex was sort of big, and I had a couple of friends who also lived in it. I actually met a couple of my friends after living there. Right by the apartment complex, there was a park with a really nice and long trail in it. The trail connected with a path that went out of the immediate area. There was a lot of nature along the path, and it went through a pretty densely wooded area. Many people who lived in my complex would walk their dogs on the trail. Other times, people would hang out at the picnic tables and the grass area in front of the park. I myself had been to the park numerous times. I would walk on the trail sometimes with my friends, or by myself. It was much more interesting than walking on a treadmill in the apartment gym. So one day, one of my friends who lived on the floor below me, Anna, told me something a bit chilling. She said that the previous night, she had been walking on the trail a little bit later. The sun had set, and she started to hear somebody walking behind her. She hadn't remembered anybody walking behind her before, and she was almost out of the woods. She sped up a little bit because it sounded like they were getting closer, but when the footsteps also sped up, she looked behind her. That's when she saw a man disappearing into the woods. This freaked her out, and she jogged the rest of the way out of the woods onto the trail, which thankfully wasn't very far. She made it back safely, and I was glad that she was okay. She didn't know if it was somebody stalking her, or if it was just a coincidence, but we both agreed it was really strange that whoever it was ran into the woods. I asked her if she would gotten a good look at the man, which she said no, not at all. We continued on talking, and the conversation led to other topics. I sort of forgot about it, and I know it sounds stupid, but the very next night, I found myself walking on the trail alone at night. It was a really nice night, and I had only gotten home from work a little bit earlier. I wanted to go walking, but the sun was about to set. I forgot all about Anna's story, and I set off on the trail. I went through the woods and didn't see anybody else walking there the entire time. Usually, by sunset, everybody would clear out of the park and the trail. By the time I was on my way back, it was basically completely dark. I was probably still 10 minutes from the apartment building when I myself heard footsteps behind me. It was then that I remembered all about Anna's experience and I got a chill down my spine. I looked behind me, but it was so dark that I couldn't see much. I thought that I saw somebody walking a ways back and it looked like a man. When I saw him, I started walking faster. After a little bit of time, I stopped hearing the noise though. But only minutes later, I heard him again. He wasn't on the path now, but in the woods. He was behind me, but walking through the dense trees, I could hear him very clearly. It sounded like he was a bit closer to me than before. I continued to walk at a fast pace. I didn't know what else to do. I wasn't a very fast runner, and I didn't have any pepper spray with me or anything like that. Then, I heard the man emerging from the woods and back onto the path. He was now about 30 feet behind me, probably. I turned around and looked and saw him on the path and walking behind. He was looking down and not at me. I knew I was getting close to the end of the woods, but I was still probably about three more minutes away. The guy was getting closer, so I decided then that I would start jogging. When I did, the man instantly broke out into a jog as well. As I was jogging, I pulled my phone out of my pocket. I scrambled to make a call as I was running, which was challenging. I was able to do it though, and I dialed 911. I put the phone on speaker so the man would hear me. I said loudly that I needed police in the park. I gave them the address, and the man was still jogging behind me. I could hear him. I told the operator what was going on, and shortly after, the man darted into the woods. He still continued to run behind me. I could hear him well, but he was in the woods once again, and I could no longer see him. I ran faster and faster, and tried to ignore the sounds of the man running. Soon, I stopped hearing him at all, though. It sounded like he started to run in the opposite direction, and then I could no longer hear him. I was able to make it out of the wooded part of the trail about a minute later. I went back to my apartment, and then the police arrived at the park a short time later. I went out and explained the whole story to them. They searched the immediate area, including the woods, but the man must have run away by then, because they were unable to find him. I felt stupid for forgetting Anna's story, but I did tell it to the police. 
there was a letter sent to all the residents about the possible stalker in the park, encouraging people not to walk through the park at night. Luckily, I never heard any more of the man after that. I just hope he didn't start doing that someplace else. I'm not sure what exactly his plan was, but when I saw him run after me in the woods, I was truly terrified. My boyfriend and I like to visit this park in our town occasionally. When we go there, we usually go for a walk around the trail and play on the playground. One night, we decided to go up there. When we got to the park, we realized that it was too cold to go on the playground or walk the trail, so we decided to just sit in the parking lot and talk. We were sitting there, having a normal conversation, talking about everyday things, when a red car slowly pulled into the parking lot. At the time, we were the only ones in the parking lot because the park is usually quiet in the evening. A woman appeared to be driving the red car, and it pulled in front of us. At first, we were confused on who it was and what she was doing. We thought maybe it was somebody that we know messing with us. We ended up getting a closer look though, and we saw it was a woman who we had never seen before. She sat there, blocking our car in with hers, and staring at us, not taking her eyes off of us. She didn't even move her head once. She had a really creepy look to her, and everything about her seemed a little bit off. She sat there, staring at us with a blank, creepy expression, even though we had no clue who she was. Then, she reversed her car, with her eyes still glued onto us, and backed up a little bit. Then, her car stopped, and sat there, all while she continued to look at us. At this point, we were confused, and also scared at the same time. She then moved her car again, this time to park right next to us. After she parked, she looked at us for a little longer, and then finally looked away. She appeared to now be looking at her phone after that. I'm not sure what she was doing, but at this point, my boyfriend was ready to roll down the window to say something. I had a bad feeling about it, so I told him to get out of there fast. We drove away, and as we did, the woman started reversing her car. It seemed like maybe she was going to drive after us. We had a head start though, and drove out of there extremely fast. And luckily, the woman was unable to follow us, and she didn't. Afterwards, we were talking about the experience that we had that day, and I had the chills throughout my body. I'm not sure who the woman is, or where she came from, but what I can say is that it's one of the creepiest things that's ever happened to me. I will say that my name is Bella for the sake of the story. And what I'm about to tell you takes place a year or two ago. I was about 18, and I loved going to the park. Both our town and the park that I went to were both really small. My favorite spots at the park to go to were the picnic area and the swings. One day in the summer, I decided to go to the park to get some fresh air. I was at the swings, and beside them was a little parking lot. I was the only person in the entire park. After being there for about 30 minutes, a car pulled in. It appeared to be a white diesel truck. I didn't know who was in the truck, but I expected somebody to get out. However, nobody got out of the truck. I really didn't think anything of it though. A few minutes went by, and still nobody got out. For some reason, I started to feel a little bit creeped out. Because of this, I decided to move to another spot in the park. Sometime later, I noticed the truck was still there, and still nobody got out of it. I was now really creeped out, and I decided to go home. On my way back home, I looked behind me to see if the vehicle was still there, and sure enough, it was. I walked home, and I told my mom about everything that had happened. She was not amused when I told her this. She suggested that we both walk to the park to see if the car was still there, and once we got there, it was gone. The crazy thing is that this happened again. However, it wasn't the same vehicle. A car pulled up and just sat there while I was the only person at the park. It was very suspicious. We moved a while back, so I don't experience that anymore. To this day, I don't know who it was or what they were doing.